All defence, Jack Russell, and he keeps that one out successfully. So what will they do? It looks like this, the bales are being lifted, and that is the end of the first day's play of the Bank of New Zealand Test Match here in Christchurch. So it was very much England's day on day one at Lancaster Park. They finished 310 for four, Alex Stewart 148, and Robin Smith 96 the day's batting stars. And with uh, Alan Lamb and Jack Russell to continue on day two, England are very well placed indeed. Let's take a look at the New Zealand bowling figures. A long, hot day for them. Danny Morrison was the most successful. Two for 78 he finished with from 20 overs. One for 59 for Chris Cairns. And the other wicket taker today was Chris Pringle. So as for some showers later on in the day, we hope that doesn't come to pass. And we're expecting a high temperature of around about 18 degrees Celsius in Christchurch today. Let's check on the condition of the pitch, though. On day one, it played very well. How's it likely to go on this for the first day? 310. So the first ball of the day and the first runs. What a beautiful shot shot for four. Alan Lamb clipping it away through the mid-wicket area for four runs. That was exactly the sort of start New Zealand did not want. It was a half volley on Lamb's legs. He played it away quite beautifully and that certainly is um, rather a depressing first ball for New Zealand. Yes, there's been a lot of talk overnight about the need for line, length, consistency trying to nail these English batsmen down, but uh, that's not a good start. See what he can do here. Better ball. Yes, I dare say post-mortems went on last night. I'm staying in the same hotel as the New Zealanders, and there was a, little, a few glum faces, and I thought a measured tread rather than spring in their step as they mounted the, the stairs <laughs> last night, so to speak. Yes. It's tough, isn't it? I mean, that's uh, life at the top, as they say. It's uh, good when it's good, but it's uh, not so good when uh, things don't go your way. So Chris Cairns, bowling from the southern end. And Alan Strike. I think England will just go on and on. They will put into bat. They've made good, very good progress so far. 300 moving along, as it were. Well, this is right, and um, if you get the runs quickly, it gives your bowlers a longer time in which to bowl at the opposition. They're built early in the game. All the fence this side time, Alan Lamb. It's the end of the first over of the day, with England 314 for four. Oh, that was an interesting looking shot. Reaching for it, getting a bit of width, and that's uh, four runs, and Jack Russell off the mark down to the vacant third man area. Oh, there's a cracking shot, and that's four more. Short, wide, not much pace, and dispatched to the point boundary for four. Oh, bad ball. Four more. Short and wide, Jack Russell hits him through forward point. There's an old, it's through Deepak Patel, a rather a lazy attempt by Deepak Patel. And there's, oh, well stopped. No, it wasn't stopped. I thought it was into uh, Shane Thompson's hands. In fact, it was right through. If that was well stopped, I should like to see one that was badly <laughs> stopped. <laughs> yes. Oh, that got an edge, but it never carried. And I think there was a bit of glove in that, and that kept it down. That's a good-looking shot by Lamb. Clipped away on the leg side, a long chase, and it's into the fence. That's a beautiful shot from Lamb. Majestic drive through the offside as Morrison overtossed outside the off stump, and Lamb goes to 40. Well, there he goes for it this time, and there's no difficulty with that one. That's played the hard square with ferocity and Lamb's brought up his 50. He's only had 96 balls, 122 minutes. And Alan Lamb, it's his 17th test half century and the third that he's made against New Zealand. Well, there's no mistake from that one at all. No mistake. Alan Lamb gives a lot of applause to Russell for playing a shot which was as good as any that we've seen this morning. Now, 
right is going to have to really hurry for that and that's not close enough to him no. oh that's a better ball from danny morrison that was a splendid ball wasn't it just left the right hander oh hooked away he's got hold of that one not particularly convincingly but uh certainly safe enough and it's Blair Hartland round two runs Lamb comes down uses his feet and over the top he goes that's a lovely stroke by Lamb so he decides to break the shackles run, run, run. oh could be a mix up here chance of a run out John Wright threw it in. Jack Russell scrambling was found short by Brian Aldridge and England have lost their first wicket of the day. Yeah, some bowling round the wicket did the trick. Jack Russell trying to scam for a single. He hasn't really been able to get Morrison away. Good feeling, good pick up, nice, solid throw back to the keeper and Jack Russell scrambling away, scrambling away. Oh my goodness me, that was tight. It looks as if he just made it actually, but a very difficult decision for the umpire to make at speed. Jack Russell has run out for 36, England 390 for five. It was a close shave, but the fielding side got the benefit of the doubt. Yep. Well, oh, he's got to run straight away. So he'll feel better for that. 391 for five at the end of the over. Brian Aldridge made the decision. Lamb plays shots too, and there's a big hit for six runs. That's about 10 rows back in the stand. A beautiful hit from Alan Lamb. Oh, he's a good looking shot from Alan Lamb. Just a little too full from Danny Morrison. And straight down the park for four runs. giving himself room cracked away that's four short and too wide and Alan Lamb takes toll and last ball before lunch and umpire Brian Aldridge moves forward to lift the bales and England go to lunch very comfortably placed at 410 for five All the way to the fence for four by Dermot Reeve. He takes the tell around and find they couldn't get down there. Well, there's that single coming. They have to hurry too to tell me who misses the wickets. Misses the ball, misses the wickets. The chance there. Great batch nearly had it. Well, beautifully fielded, picked up, and Deepak Patel just a little bit far away from the stumps to be able to get it with his ball in hand. An explosion from Alan Lamb. No need to run too far. The upward's still quick. There's a nice shot from Reeve. He might get a second boundary here. The upfield is very fast. The New Zealand fieldsman making a valiant attempt. But that is a fine stroke by Reeve. Slightly overtossed by Thompson. Reeve goes high. And safely out to over mid wicket for four runs. batted for four and a half hours for his 93 44 scoring shots 13 boundaries and once again traditionally Alan Lamb very powerful square of the wicket he got through to 93 unlucky to miss out on a test century well uh, it was almost a surprise wasn't it beautifully flighted delivery through the gap it went and that's great reward for Deepak Patel. Marvellous innings from Alan Lamb. 
That was it. And he looked like he was just trying to run it down behind point, perhaps, but rather lazy, Henry. Yes, I thought he slightly lost his way at the end of the innings. He was batting so well, and then he, as the 100 approached, he hardly scored a run into any sort, did he? No. Well, their stump vision got a, a very good view of that as it snuck through between bat and pad. The new man facing. And he swings the first ball away behind square. A long chase for Pringle. And comes back for two. So uh, Lewis off the mark immediately. Well, dragged it down off the back foot. Good shot. He's beaten the field. Well, that was a fine stroke, wasn't it? I mean, he, again, it was not a good ball. It was short, a little bit wide, and it got the treatment. It's not a very beautiful stance, is it, that of Lewis? A bit crouched. Oh, he cuts it away. Didn't seem to have much effect there. <laughs> as he crashed it away through backward point for four. Full on the leg side, hit away. This will be four more. The pack Patel, no chance. Oh, he's gone over the top. Big hit and well struck. The field is fairly close set. And a good, bold shot by Dermot Reeve. Oh, that's a nice stroke by Lewis. Beautifully timed. Super shot. Oh, that's a superb drive. That'll be another four. Yep. Reeve uh, dabs one away on the onside. And up comes the 500. <laughs> Applause for England's 500 for the loss of six wickets. And Reeve goes on to 47. Reeve goes high in the air. This should be his 50. Trickling out towards the boundary. And the batsman will come back for a third run. And Dermot Reeve completes a 50 on debut for England. Two for 114 for him. Reeve again over the top. Good clean hit. Four more coming up here. Starting to play with real freedom now is Reeve. And he takes another boundary. Now Chris Cairns to Chris Lewis. Beautiful looking drive again, and it's through. Goodbye ball, four more. He's rushed through to 31 in 39 minutes. Oh, oh boy, what a shot. Chris Cairns learning the hard way here. Last ball before T now for Cairns. And he's squirted her way down to third man. Thompson makes a valiant attempt and fails. Four runs off the last ball of the over. Cairns concedes 14 off the over. Lewis goes to 41 not out at afternoon T. Reeve is 55 not out, and England's at T on the second day are 525 for the loss of six. So you can see there the sundry electrical storm coming up from the south and threatening the city. But underneath there, that bottom layer that you can see just behind the Trust Bank scoreboard and the super screen there, showing you that it's reasonably clear lower down. So there's a chance that the higher clouds can keep on going past and can avoid the city. Oh, that's a lovely shot again from Lewis. My word, he's hit the ball well. That's going to run away again, I think. A big chase for Pringle. He might get it just inside as they complete the third and they settle 4-3. That's a good shot from Lewis. That's a very good shot from Lewis. Can Wright get to it? I don't think anybody would have got to that. His ninth boundary, he's 48. There it is, he's gone for the big one. And Chris Lewis has picked up his second 
half century in tests, 52 including 10 fours. <laughs> He's out. He advanced once too often, saw that it wasn't there, stopped and tried to get it into the angle, but hit it directly to Andrew Jones in the gully. And the seventh wicket has fallen. Reeve out, caught by Jones, bowled by Pringle for 59. It's 544 for seven. And Jones makes the catch. Reeve live, leaves the end of his first innings in Test cricket, but he's fallen in England's cause. He's out for 59, and England are 554 for seven. Yes, as I was saying, Grant, he uh, started to advance and looking to hit the ball, I'd say, over mid-off, uh, changed his mind and just chipped it out to backward point. Harrison out of Lewis. Oh, it's exciting when Lewis is bottom. This one's gone away over point, really, for four. Beautifully whipped away, four more. This time on the leg side, superb shot. All lobbed away and just wide of the bowler. Frustrating for Chris Pringle, just away from his left hand. Oh, Pringle has a big wipe at this. It's high in the air and it's bounced just in front of John Wright. So no luck at all in this over for Chris Pringle. That's one of the better overs he's bowled in the test match. And it's 559 for seven. Here's Lewis advancing down, has a bit of a heave at this one. It's gone back with a score for four runs. Not his best shot, but certainly effective enough. The back battle to Pringle. Well, I think that tells his story. Could be a wicket there. Great match is under it. He's lost his cap. He's caught it. And Pringle is out. So successful Patel. His second wicket. And what a restart. Pringle having a tremendous swing, getting right underneath it. And I thought Mark Great Batch, uh, Bob Kunis, does that perfectly. A difficult one. He got it absolutely right. Yes, those sorts of catches, uh, waiting for it to come down, Henry, uh, are never easy. But he never took his eye off the ball for a moment. There he is, I bet he's relieved. <laughs> One's seen players stand under those for a long time, and perhaps all hardly going to touch them. So there we are, the score now is 571 for eight. Now, there he is, Philip de Freitas, the new batsman, is taking guard. Well, is this one going to be out? Is it going over there? Oh, no. It's gone right over the top there. John Wright crashing into the fence. So that's six runs. De Freitas is first scoring stroke. <laughs> what a tremendous blow. Pringle again to Lewis. He's got him. He's flying at that without moving his feet. And that is uh, the end of Chris Lewis who has been bowled there by Pringle for 70. A marvellous innings, an innings I think that we all remember. The declaration, has the declaration come? De Freitas is going off. Um, I think the declaration has come. De Freitas is running off, so too is Lewis. The New Zealand players are coming in. So Chris Lewis faced just 73 balls. He had 26 scoring shots, and 13 of those were boundaries. Some marvellous shots down through the long-off area. Some very powerful shots square of the wicket as well. So England finally declaring at 580 for nine. A massive first inning score and a very consistent batting effort. Graham Gooch missed out at the top, but then 35, 96, 93, 36, 59, 70, 10. And of course, Alex Stewart's highest test score yesterday of 148. So England, a fine first innings batting effort, 580 before Graham Gooch declared the innings closed nine wickets down.
New Zealand bowling figures now, Danny Morrison, two for 133. Chris Cairns, probably the pick of the team bowlers, but the least successful, ironically. Chris Pringle finished with three for 127. And Deepak Patel got two wickets with his off-spinners. A long spell from uh, Deepak Patel, 46 overs, two for 132. So England declared at 580 for nine, and the New Zealand openers uh, in the first innings, remembering New Zealand had to get to 381, or have to get to 381 to avoid the follow-on. John Wright playing in his 75th Test match, and Blair Hartland from Canterbury making his Test debut. So first ball of the innings, De Freitas to Hartland. And he took it on the body. Didn't play a stroke, so they're not going to run. Now, Graham Gooch trying to put the young man under as much pressure as he can. You see, he's brought Robin Smith in here. Just so that the young man, while he's batting, can see that field. He's not necessarily expecting a catch there, Graham Gooch. Peel for a catch and close. Came from the pad. And the pressure on Hartland in the first over comes to an end of maiden over, bold. And here comes the first run, as Wright has the ball down towards third man, and he'll go back for the second run. As Hick goes chasing back from the slips, so New Zealand underway. Catch it! Ball getting down the leg side. And the batsmen have changed ends. We'll have a look at the umpire here, see whether there's any signal. Yes, so the leg by. Somebody shouted, uh, catch it there. So Blair Hartland still yet to score. Yes, there's always somebody on the field inside, shouts, catch. You can see clearly that coming off the hip bone, where the thigh pad is. No danger of that hitting the glove or the bat, but the fielders all get put, pumped up, and there's always somebody shouts, catch it. And it's wise of the field inside to catch it and leave it to the umpire. Another look at the Port Hills, and you can see there that uh, the rain is certainly heading towards Lancaster Park. Now, as we pull back into the stadium, you'll see the two umpires coming together. And I'm sure the batsmen would be delighted if the umpires decided the light wasn't quite good enough. And they've offered it to the batsman, and the batsman, not surprisingly, has, have said, let's get out of here. So John Wright and Blair Hartland have survived a very difficult period. It's not necessarily the end of the day, I don't think, but uh, it's closed in quite dramatically, and I'd be surprised if they came back. So there we are, three without loss. England bowled uh, two and a bit overs. England scored 580 for nine declared. And uh, New Zealand, in reply, uh, three without loss. Hartland is still yet to score, and John Wright has the only runs off the bat. So just two overs and two balls bowled before Bad Light once again stops play with New Zealand three without loss. John Wright has two of them, there's one league by, and Blair Hartland in his first test match, yet to make his first test run. Uh, one over and two balls from Phil DeFreitas, and one over from Chris Lewis. One leg by in the New Zealand total at the moment of three without loss. And play has been delayed.